In today's video, I'll be taking you on board the brand new Qantas Link Airbus A220 from Melbourne to Canberra. I'll show you around the new economy seat and tell you where to sit and where not to sit. The onboard are buffet, in-flight entertainment and more. If there's a particular part of the video that you're looking for, then skip ahead and use the timestamps below. I've just arrived off a 737 from Sydney and I have a few hours to fill in before the next flight so I've taken advantage of Melbourne Airport's great plane spotting spots. Here's the aircraft that today's plane is replacing, the Boeing 717. I took a three hour farewell trip in late December and that video is on my channel. They're great to fly in with those overly powerful rear mounted engines and while this jet is off for retirement, those engines are actually being installed in the upgraded Boeing B-52 Stratofortress bomber. But I digress. Here's today's aircraft, the second Airbus A220 in the Qantas Link fleet, Victor Hotel X-Ray 4 Bravo. Skip ahead with the timestamps below if you want to see the seat while I rabbit on about this aircraft for a little longer and include some footage from Canberra too. This aircraft started life as a Bombardier C series before Airbus bought the company and renamed it the A220. This is the Dash 300 model and there were rumours of a longer model although I suspect that's unlikely as this would eat into the Airbus A320 sales. It's assembled in Montreal, Canada and it was delivered brand new in January 2024 to Qantas Link and called Koala. It's interesting to contrast this with the 717 as the older jet had rear mounted engines allowing the whole fuselage to sit lower to the ground where it made it easier to load in regional airports that may not have had aero bridges. It also kept the engines away from the ground where they might ingest foreign bodies. As turbofans have grown in size, the wings and whole fuselage have to be high enough off the ground to maintain enough clearance. But engines underneath the wings are much easier to reach for the maintenance staff, and now runways are generally better maintained so there's less objects to be ingested. That's why we now see these smaller jets, including the Embraer E-Series, mostly having engines under the wings. This green A220 was the first one delivered to the airline in January 2024 and painted in the latest instalment of the Qantas Indigenous Art series and I think it looks brilliant and hopefully I get to fly on it soon. One minor complaint though is the lack of painted wingtips and a green roux would have looked great on the engine cowling similar to the red ones seen on our aircraft today. It was time to board and it's always exciting walking onto a brand new aircraft and for me a new aircraft type as well. Today was the first commercial A220 flight operating in Australia so I was grateful to have secured a ticket. Hello, hey, as we enter the jet we get a warm welcome from the right flight attendant and we started today. with the that 10 business on. class seats in a 2-2 layout. They have a seat pitch of 37 inches and 5 inches of recline. The legroom is a little tighter in the first row due to the bulkhead and you can't sneak your feet under the seats in front. They have both USB A and C ports and a wireless phone charger but no PowerPoint. Behind the barrier is the economy class in A2-3 layout and here's my seat 5 Alpha. The seats on the left, A and C, between row 4 and 9 have 9 inches of extra legroom which cost $30 unless you're Platinum 1 or Chairman's Lounge. Then you can select those for free. Here's the standard 30 inches of legroom, further back for comparison's sake. Now let's have a look around the seat. Above you is an overhead air vent, which I always appreciate to provide flowing air and there's also a reading light as well. In front there's no IFE screen, but instead a device holder, which you can connect to the internet via the Wi-Fi or the streaming entertainment Qantas app. Mine did not work initially until I turned the VPN off and then it worked fine. The headrest is adjustable both up and down and pinches in on the sides. There are both USB-A and C ports and a power plug to share with your neighbour. There's two to share between the three passengers on the other side. 
The windows are considerably bigger than most other aircraft and provide a great view of the Pratt & Whitney PW1500 turbofan and those painted winglets. Here's seat 4E, which does have extra legroom, but be aware that this object somewhat obstructs your legroom. Now I did sneak into business class after our arrival into Canberra. Here's the legroom, which should be 37 inches of pitch. They also had this movable cocktail table. And under here is the USB-A and C port and a wireless phone charger position. In front there's a device holder and also more power ports, but again, no AC plug. In the front row of economy, they have fold-out tray tables from the centre armrests and they have device holders in them as well. Today you're flying on a Qantas Link Airbus A220. Here are a few points. But it was time for us to back out for our 45 minute journey and I'll stop talking and let you enjoy the small log. The A220 has double the range of the 717 it replaces. So while this is a very short route, Air Canada fly these over six hours between LAX and Montreal. Here's an image from Qantas comparing the two respective ranges. I expect that they'll probably start flying these on short haul international routes over to New Zealand and maybe even up to Southeast Asia as well. We also got a goodies bag, which includes these biscuits, which I kind of don't want to eat, a lanyard and a model A220, which is very cool and is actually metal rather than plastic, so decent quality. It's a short flight, so there was a single service of a quick bite and cold drinks and this inaugural flight coaster. I checked the in-flight Wi-Fi speed and these are the numbers it came up with. I logged onto my phone to test the movie streaming and there seemed like a decent selection, although be aware that it will only work if you have headphones attached, which is a good idea to stop you from interrupting your neighbours. I guess people will argue about the wisdom of not having in-flight entertainment screens. Apparently it saves around 200 kilograms according to Executive Traveller, which improves efficiency and Qantas profits up so reduces the ticket prices. A number of other airlines have decided against IFE screens and I'm personally not fussed as I never use them on short haul flights and instead use my own device as I did on this trip. There are two toilets at the rear for economy passengers. It's a regular sized toilet and pretty plain. I do wish they tried something a little novel such as what Air New Zealand's done with their A320neos with butterflies all over the wall. There's also a baby change table in there too. I might add that while this is an inaugural flight, I wasn't invited by Qantas and I paid for my own seat. I think it's really important that us aviation vloggers maintain our neutrality as much as possible and if I was ever invited on something and did not pay for myself, I'd let you know. I also avoid product placement because I don't like the idea of spending 60 seconds of your time telling you how amazing something that I'm paid to say is and you should buy it. So instead of that, then please give the video a thumbs up and maybe share it with a friend. So, how was the flight? The aircraft itself is great. It's certainly more refined and comfortable than the 717. The seats are comfy and it feels really spacious. This is Avgeek specific and while the 717 sounds great spooling up, this does as well and we get to hear it again with the thrust reverses in Canberra. The food is adequate for such a short flight. The crew were great and put up with us hordes of Avgeeks filming everything and generally getting in the way. I think they were pretty excited about being on the inaugural flight as well. 
As I said earlier, there are certain seats with extra legroom, although sadly, even for people with silver, gold or platinum status, you have to pay $30 on these shorter flights, or $40 for longer ones such as Melbourne to Brisbane. The legroom in these seats is decent, except for 4E with that obstruction I showed you before. It's not terrible, but not great if you're paying extra for it. Otherwise, the standard amount of legroom is fine for an aircraft usually on short routes. Otherwise, sitting on the left side is ideal for couples, or if you don't want to climb over as many people to get to the aisle. I wasn't too worried about the lack of the IFE screen myself. As I said earlier, I usually bring my own device and headphones, and the airline headphones are usually pretty dodgy anyway. I suppose on longer routes, it might be nice to have them if I didn't bring a device myself, but most of the time, again, everyone does, and power plugs mean that you can keep your device charged. It's odd that the poor business passengers don't have an AC power plug though. It's always fun taking part in an inaugural flight, especially to Canberra, where one of my last flights from here was the last ever commercial Qantas 747 flight, and that video and the Boeing 717 farewell trip are all on my channel. If you enjoyed the video then please give it a thumbs up and tell me what you think of the A220 and when you might be flying one next. Thanks for watching.